Go ahead. Okay. So um, for agenda bashing, I was saying I um, wanted to request a little bit more time for today because um, so I only had planned to discuss one uh, one question for or Ayana question. But then we got a good review from John yesterday, and I'd like to discuss some of these points today. So it might take a little bit longer than the 10 minutes I asked for. So next slide, please. Okay. So the just for the sake of information, uh, because the recording has just been started, uh, we have shown the not well slide um, just before the recording started. And here we are. So next slide. Yes. So um, the status of the document, first of all, all the reviews from the last call were addressed before John um, posted his, his review. And um, the, uh, the one from the ops uh, was OK. And then from the gen art review, um, there was just one comment left about being clear about encryption authentication status of the various messages that wasn't addressed. Slide, please. Um, so the IANA questions that I sent to the mailing list was the following. Uh, we use these new parameters that we need to register. Um, these nonce one and nonce two that are sent in the client to resource server and resource server to client messages, and uh, from what I understand, these need to be understand uh, these need to be registered in the auth parameters registry, which I linked here, and um, this the template for doing this registration uh, is not clear on what would be the right location to use. Um, and the process to get this registered is to, to send a registration request to the designated expert. And in this case, it's Hannes, who is not on the call today. Um, and so since the template does not specify uh, a location for uh, this client resource server, resource server to client messages, I think my proposal will be to come up with a good name for these two messages. And then I will send this to, to Hannes and, and let's see if he accepts it or um, if he complains. And I just want to mention for anybody who has not been participating in the discussion, the mailing list, that um, there are almost all parameters um, use the template locations. But there is a couple of, par of parameters that uh, use different names. So he might just go ahead and accept uh, and accept a different name than those in the template. I don't really know. So if anybody has proposals on good names for these two messages, uh, then we can um, take those. I don't know if you had any Jim. Um... I don't think so. Okay, I'll just give it a try and and uh, send it to the mailing list, so to the ACE mailing list, and then if no one objects, after a couple of days, I will send it to the designated expert. And then a second comment was where to put this new OSCOR security context parameters registry. And Ludwig was uh, suggesting we put it into under the ACE page. I thought core um, was a better choice just because uh, that's where all the OSCOR stuff is. Anybody has an opinion? it's fine we can move on I don't have a strong opinion on that so I guess it's fine under ACE I vaguely agree with Ludwig okay because because it is go it all goes into the token 
stuff. It's, it, we're not planning on sending it separately than tokens right now. Not right now, but um, it might be this this structure might be used somewhere else. But it doesn't really matter. It, it's just where to put it. Um, it can be found anywhere. So okay, it's fine for me to go for ace. The next slide. We're going to the interesting part of this presentation is uh, John's comment about identifiers negotiation. So this is how the draft is written right now. Um, the if you don't remember, we we had some some negotiation of one of the identifiers, which are the the sender ID, the OSCOR sender ID of the ACE client and the OSCOR sender ID of the ACE server. We had one negotiation for one of these two parameters before, so the RS could choose the client sender ID, uh, and that was removed because it was too complicated and following band review and several meetings uh, that was removed. And so right now we have the following mechanism um, to set up these identifiers, and the mechanism is, is the following. The AS is the identifier, both for client and and server, and those are sent uh, in the access token and, and in, the, in the RS information. And yeah, that's it. The client and resource server cannot negotiate any anything. Um, and this is used as input to the keys and the full OSCOR security context. Next slide, please. Um, John, and this is text from his mail, which you can read here. And I'm I'm sure that some people will not have seen this email because uh, it might have come yesterday late or early. Um, so the current assignment mechanisms only work without problem uh, if the RS does not have any other non uh, AS or score connections. So the RS is not using, for example, ad hoc or other things to set up OSCOR. Uh, the co-op client and co-op server roles are fixed and cannot be switched. So the, the client and server will not reverse roles. And only draft ITF A's OSCOR profile is used. So only the OSCOR profile is used. And in any other case, if you take any other of these, then this can cause recipient ID collisions. And also in future system where the AS supports uh, something like an ad hoc OSCO profile, uh, then you cannot have both the current OSCO profile and the ad hoc OSCO profile at the same, on the same node. This is the problem. Next. Slide. Yes, so the, the, the proposal that John brought up is the following, that each node um, picks the sender ID of the other node. So the client picks the sender ID of the resource server, and the resource server picks the sender ID of the client, and they exchange this at the same time as the post to authorization info together with the token, and then on the response to that. So when the nonces are sent. Um, and this allows to uh, for the nodes to negotiate uh, their identifiers, and this would make the OSCO profile work with future possible ad hoc profiles or with ad hoc in general. And if the um, if the client and re and the server switched roles, so. This is a big change. Um, uh, we can go to the next slide, I think. A consequence of that would be that also the OSCOR security context object would need a new identifier. Because right now, this OSCOR security context object is identified with the sender ID of the client and the ID context. And we can um, separate that 
like we, we won't have this sender ID sent in the OSCore security context object anymore, and we need to have an identifier of this object. Um, and this identifier is used when the client wants to talk to the AS. You can send this identifier to identifier this input key material. It could be an object ID, it could be a hash of this object. Um, but yes, so the question is, so this is a big change. So if we wanted to go forward with this change, it would probably bring it back to the working group, I assume. And probably the chairs need to let me know. But I, I personally think it's worth doing this change and uh, it seems quite straightforward to implement and I couldn't find any problem with uh, with it. Uh, two follow up comments on your presentation, Francesca. Uh, the problems would be collisions or large messages. It's obvious if you have long random IDs, everything works without collisions, but then it's not efficient. Um, yes, thank you, John. And then I think a much better way of seeing it is that each node chooses its recipient ID rather than it chooses something for some other node. But it's the same. Yeah, but I just said sender ID because uh, in all score terminology, that's what it's, it's sent, the sender ID of the node sending the message um, when it's the request. But yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, explain to me why you think there's a problem if we swap roles. Um, I think there's a problem if you swap roles and there is more than one RS. So you have two RS talking to the same client. If you then swap roles, uh, you might get collisions. Mm -hmm. I would expect that the server would always be the entity where the token was posted to, just like what we're doing with the group com. The, the point, though, is that with OSCOR, you set up the OSCOR security context, and then um, you could switch roles. Um, you need to set that to post a token on what was previously the, the co-op client, but you use the same OSCOR security context to protect communication in both directions. But who's posting the token in that case? Well, the, the, the okay, the ACE, like the previous resource server would need to post the token to the previous client. And the previous client would not have a key to be able to decrypt the token. Uh, yes, it already has an OSCOR security context in place. But it doesn't understand the token, so it doesn't know that. Yeah, that, I, th I think it's a good point, Jim, that there, there is sort of, a, there needs to be a, sort of the reverse setup as well uh, with where we have the two endpoints, both need to be contacting the AS and requesting tokens and posting them to the to the, the other endpoint. Um, so, but but the result, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, it's a good question. Can we use the same as core security context for both these? Um, perhaps not. That's a good one. I I I think the RS posting a token back to the client is a complicated case. I think a simpler thinking is that C has unprotected resources, so RS could send a request to C without any tokens. Mm. Yeah, John, do you mean like on... Uh... Still an OSCOR, OSCOR um, protected communication, but without a need for um, access rights to be posted at, at the previous co-op client.
And what prevents it from using the same con security context? Nothing prevents it, but there might be collisions um, on the client or the previous client, the ACE client, uh, um, for that previous resource server identifier. The client might have the same for. Um... Okay, I'm, to I'm totally lost. If, if that's true, then I would expect the client to have rejected the initial token because it had a conflict. We, we never say that you should reject a token based on whatever identifier for the resource server the token contains. Yeah. Jim, I suppose this could be two different, the RSS, the two different RSS could be with different AS's. They, so they could have the same. Daniel, can you go back a couple of slides just to go to the picture? Um, maybe slide six. Yeah, this one. But you're talking about situations which are not new. Um, we've we've discussed that as a problem for some time, and we have decided at the moment that we don't care about that problem. So now you're just suddenly bring, deciding you care about the problem. Um, what I didn't think about before is. A node implementing uh, the OSCOR profile um, to talk to one resource server and implementing something like an ad hoc OSCOR profile to talk to another resource server. And how would, yeah, how do these identifiers not collide without? being huge identifiers. We're saying a client only use OSCOR profile and that, that should be fine, but and this is not something that we can fix later on. So what you're talking about is a situation where I have set up an ad hoc and now I come in and I get a, a, an AS token which has the same name because if, if, it, if it's the other way around, there's not a problem because everybody can choose yeah. their own yeah. identifiers. Yeah. Right now, I don't care. But the thing is, if we don't fix it now, we can't fix it later. Um, if you say, I don't care right now, we don't even have this ad hoc profile. Uh, if you want to set up OSCOR, that's what you, you're, you're going to use the OSCOR profile and with the um, with the assumptions we have made in the document right now, it works. Yes, that's correct, but because ad hoc is now adopted and it's very much more likely that that the ad hoc profile will be coming soon, um, I am thinking we might want to fix this. And I understand the document is um, yeah, it's a bit of it's a bit uh, of a shame that it comes only now, but. What can you do? I think this is excellent BIS material. So what you're saying, we don't have a way to like version versioning the OSCOR profile, but what we can do later on would be to um, write 
uh, like a different Oscar profile, call it something else, that would work with Endor. Is that what you're saying? Oh, I don't know that it actually needs to be a separate profile. I mean, simply the existence of additional parameters in the registration message may be sufficient. Mm -hmm. Between the older and the newer version. So something that updates this document later on. Yes. Okay. That could be one way forward. I, I think this is to implement in the document. It's an easy, it, it's easy to do. Uh, as you can imagine, it's just adding two more parameters and uh, removing them from the uh, this, uh, the object that the AS sends. Um, yeah, if we don't do this change, then these two parameters, client ID and server ID, stay in this Oscar security object con uh, security context object, and then later we need more discussion about. When, uh, like, which one does the resource server pick if it receives both in the payload and in this object in token? Um, it becomes slightly more complicated. Okay, I I don't think I understand how that. Uh, my feeling is that this cannot really be fixed with the. It can be fixed with the. Be later, but then any AES have to choose between the original version or the BIS. If you have both, you will still run into collision problems mm. or large IDs. If you only update, if you only implement the original version, if both, if, if either side only events. That only does the original version, then that is true. If both sides implement the updated version, that would not be a true statement. But there might be a, a, a situation where there is a coexisting of old and new devices. Some have the old. Profile and others have the new. But the new ones would still be able to deal with the old profile. I, yeah. I think you might still get collisions if the clients talk to several ASS, different ASS that implement different things, but and of course they switch roles and so on. It gets more and more, um, you get less and less collisions, but uh, you will still get collisions. I don't know how serious it would be and how much of a corner case the collisions would occur in. And that issue has also been previously raised and decided to not be, and it was decided it was not a big issue. Um, I don't think uh, my, a migration path to ad hoc has been discussed. I don't think role switching has been discussed. Well, I, I don't believe that role switching is a problem. So you're not going to convince me with that. And when I brought the issue up quite a while ago, I discussed both the issue of multiple ASs and the issue of getting identifiers assigned outside of the AS as being issues. And at that point in time, the decision was it was not a big enough problem to deal with. So I'm having a hard time saying it's a big enough problem to deal with now. I don't I don't know if role switching is important, but don't I don't understand how you would get no collisions if you have rule switching and several RSS. Um, okay, I don't, I, I, I don't believe that your role switching is going to cause collisions, whether you have multiple RSS or not. If, if you put the same context onto multiple RSS, 
that's going to be a problem, but that's already known to be a problem. Um, and it's something that right now we're saying you're not supposed to be doing. That's written down. The OSCORE profile itself does say that you can send it. It can be valid for several RSS. But the expectation is you only talk to one of them at a time. Otherwise, yes, you have a collision. Um, you also, if, if you put it on multiple RSs, you have a huge, a even larger problem than that, which is you are going to reuse IVs. Uh, no, not at all. No, if, 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 if both of them have the exact same, if you post the exact same security context, the RS1 and RS2. They were you negotiate the same one and two. So if it, security wise, everything works perfectly uh, with posting it to any number of RSS, the same token. Mm. Ha, ha, if, if that, okay. I mean, basically, if that's true, then, then, then you can, then either A, the completely different security context, and you can figure out which one it is by trial and error. Or B, they're going to be the same security context because you're using the same nonces and you've got a problem. Yeah, but then you have a bigger problem. I agree that you can do it by trial and error, but that's very ugly. But yes, you can. Okay, so how to move forward? Um, I think if more people were to uh, uh, pitch into the uh, uh, mail thread that John has started, that would be helpful. Um, I know we discussed previously about identifiers and collision and several AS and several ORS, et cetera, but we did not discuss this role switching um, particularly. And I did not, yeah, I, I did not think about uh, running a, 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 something like an ad hoc profile um, where they're on the same node with the, uh, Oscar profile with role switching, etc. Um, yeah, as I said, the change would be in practice small, like the, the 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 written text, but it's a big change in in um, in concept. So I would assume that if if we were to do this change. The document would be delayed um, quite a bit. I don't know exactly how how much. I think for this either Jim or um, well, Ben is not here, but the bears would have an idea of that probably. Personally, I'd have to stop and think about it because I'd want to know all of the po possible security issues that show up, and I'm not too sure what they are at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not only like doing this text change and then run it through all the um, possible I don't know, that working group, last call, last call, whatever that that might mean. This is in practice. Doing, maybe yes, uh, maybe no. I mean, I would have to actually have a much better idea of exactly what is changing and exactly what the implications are to make that call personally. Okay. So hopefully now you, you got the overview of, of what will be changing 
which is the AES would not be uh, picking out the identifiers for uh, sender ID for the client and the resource server, but this will be negotiated at the same time as the nonces are sent. Um, and I think John mentioned in his email that this will be done in the same way uh, DTLS, um, yeah, with connection ID and adoc do it. I think the negotiating mechanism in the adoc was initially suggested by Jim himself, um, referring to in a similar, uh, suggesting to do it in a similar way that I do it, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I, I think we never really thought about this type of negotiation of identifiers. The negotiation that we discussed and uh, shut down for was only about the client's identifier where the AS would assign a client identifier and then the resource server would say, no, I don't like this, take this instead. Um, which is different from this change, the, what we would do here, because in this case, the AS will not assign identifiers at all. And it's completely up to the client and resource server to to uh, um, send identifiers to each other. So yeah, it, it's different from what was discussed and shut down. Um, and it was shut down because it was too complicated. And that's also what makes me think that if we do an update to this document where we leave this document as is, we let the AS set client ID and server ID, so these two identifiers, and then we do an update where the client can still negotiate. That's going to be slightly more complicate, uh, complicated because um, we need to consider the case where the AS does send this identifier and then the client, the resource server, don't use them and pick their own. And yeah. So I'm just wondering if it would help to given the, so I haven't read um, John's uh, email. So I guess in John's email, we explained some, uh, the problem. Um, I'm wondering if it would make sense to, um, and it would ease to understand what are the changes by just proposing it, uh, showing a diff with the existing document. And make I, sure. I could do that. Yeah. I could do that. And keep it on a separate branch and keep it in the GitHub just to have an idea of what, what the changes would be. And that would also allow for people to reason over and to analyze and see like, are we missing yeah. big, big security and considerations or analysis or anything else? Yeah. So one thing is, um, is um to to add some text or uh, but just to make sure that um um i mean the the i mean uh, the, the purpose is not to is just to make it right not to uh to minimize the changes uh make sure that some of the former assumptions um are appropriately appropriately changed and um and that yeah I mean the, the the full document is coherent. That's the the thing we. Mm -hmm. That's the, the the major issue I would say is uh, to have now at that stage a document that is not coherent. So I mean, it is it, it is coherent with the assumptions it does. Like right yeah. now the document is not wrong. There is this is not something to. It's not. Yeah, a yeah, yeah, sure. It's just a. Uh, uh, it's a late uh, change. A feature, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like working group could agree that this is not something we want to do, or we could agree that, yes, it is important yeah. enough that we want to do it. Um, so I think maybe this uh, But the discussion based on the diff might help, on yeah. Yeah, okay. I can do that.
and then we'll see how we make that um, if we make it or how we make it um, yeah um, yeah so I um, I had a couple more slides and it was about minor minor comments that John had and it's about um, uh, names of parameters and uh, of objects to uh, clarifications. And then there was a comment John had about server authentication. Um, so this is also more about clarifying uh, that server authentication requires two additional things that are is not very clear. And then um, it was a point about Appendix B2 and how can this appendix be too used after or a source code profile is used? But we don't need to take this now because we uh, spent a lot of time on on the other comments. And yeah, that's it. So I guess we'll be continuing the discussion in the main list, or I think so. Okay. I don't think it's the uh, end of the discussion. <laughs> no. And I, I would also um, very much appreciate Ben to pitch in and give his uh, opinion as AD. Yeah, okay, uh, I think uh, my my feeling is that first the discussion should be within the working group, and um, and once we we have a plan, we may ping Ben. Sounds good. OK, good. Any other comment? I'm hearing none. Jim, do you have any comment? Nothing that's not going to go on the mailing list. OK. So I guess we can adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much for attending the meeting. And see you on the mailing list. Review the MQTT pre profile, please. Yeah. Yeah, it's in working group last call. So, um, yes. It would be appreciated to go through, through the document. Um, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.